This week on Inside EVs, we drive the 2020 Toyota Prius Prime in limited trim. We compare it to the Ferrari Portofino, Ferrari's daily driver. We do a electric only range test on the Prius and we explore its pros and cons. As always, thank you for watching our weekly series of plug-in and electric vehicle content. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification button because we have a lot of fun stuff coming for you guys. The 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery pack powers this Prius for 25 miles electric only. But what happens when you put your foot down and do things no Prius has ever done before? At full power, the engine and electric motor make a combined 121 horsepower system total output. You guys know us, we had to put the Prius to the test around the racetrack for a little fun because, well, why not? We briefly explored the acceleration of the Prius, which was honestly pretty poor, but it made up for with a chassis that is balanced and actually pretty fun. Tossing the Prius around the corners yielded positive chassis feedback and control, meaning you'll be able to rip through city traffic if you're running late for your morning commute. We know the Prius Prime is Toyota's best daily driving option, but how does it compare to Ferrari's best option, the Portofino? Sounds weird to hear, but let me explain. So what are we doing with this car? Well, if you look over here, we have the daily driver perfect version from Toyota, the plug-in hybrid Prius Prime Advanced. And so today we're gonna find out if the Prius is a better car than the Ferrari Portofino. Let me explain why this actually makes a little bit of sense. I was at the North Carolina Antique Auto Association's gathering where I was invited to go to a presentation on electric vehicles. And mingling in the parking lot of the car enthusiasts, the older generation of car enthusiasts in North Carolina, was a man standing proudly next to his Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid. And he kept going on about how this car was incredible, the technology was so cool, and he would not let it down. He would go just like this. I have a Ferrari, and this Prius is just way better in every way than my Ferrari. And every time I have seen a Prius on the road with a plug, I think, is it actually better than a Ferrari? So my friend Jim kindly invited us down, and today we are going to find out on this beautiful Portofino, if that is a better car than this plug-in hybrid Prius. Let's run through a few numbers right off the bat. The Prius on the front of it has 32 bulbs. That includes headlights, running lights, fog lights, turn signal. The Ferrari, only 22. 10 more in this thing. As we move farther back, we'll find a few differences as well. You'll notice this has a very sleek, design, very aerodynamic. Same with the Prius, although the Prius has a shark fin antenna on the roof. That's pretty cool, something that the Ferrari doesn't have. That just has a little knob on the trunk for radio reception. So two points to the Prius, one for actually zero to the Ferrari so far. As we move inside the cabins, you'll see that the Prius has a heads up display, something the Ferrari surprisingly does not have. So the Prius, more tech. USB ports, one, three USB ports. And then as we move around to the back of the car, specifically, the Ferrari has a typical aluminum normal trunk, whereas the Prius has a carbon fiber lift gate. And a few last points about the Prius. This gets, well, we've averaged in our testing up to this point, just about 50 miles per gallon. Jim claims that he can get between 10 and 15 in the Ferrari. So really, I mean, you have no choice but to choose a Prius plug-in for your daily driving needs. And now let's go find out how this car drives, how efficient it is for the second part of this video. And now it's time for the Inside EV's plug-in hybrid range test. A little different than what we do with our full electric vehicles, which is a 70 mile per hour consumption test. What we're gonna do here is drive around the city with a full charged battery pack and go until the internal combustion engine kicks on. We'll also have a chat about the Prius along the way. 
adjust the seat a little bit. And we're gonna select EV mode locked in. It does its nice startup sequence, which you can turn off thankfully because it does get pretty aggravating. Okay, we need some AC here. If I could figure out how this silly navigation system works, it's very uh, honestly convoluted. It says it's 100 degrees outside. And we're gonna put the car in eco mode. We are gonna lock us in EV mode like we are now. And we're gonna go until the gas engine turns on. <laughs> and we're just gonna run moderate fan speed. I think this simulates real world driving. Now, as you guys know, I do all of my range tests for full EVs. I always do a 70 mile per hour highway loop. Um, for the plug-in hybrids though, I find that they're most useful around cities. Uh, driving in electric that's really they you know they have small battery packs they're good for stuff like this so we're just gonna go drive around and see what kind of mileage we can get the other thing I should probably do is <laughs> reset our trip computer there we go and uh, the way I'll know is if we get the gas engine kicked on is I have a little car on my screen that shows green for EV and that will turn off when the internal combustion engine portion turns on. Now the Prius is a pretty interesting car drivetrain wise. You have so many drive mode settings. You have, uh, first off, you have eco, normal, and power mode. And uh, you guys know me, I've had it in power mode all week racing everyone. <laughs> no, I've actually just been driving it normally, cruising up and down the highway in hybrid mode on the highway, mostly with a dead battery because I've just been cruising up and down the highways, unfortunately. I didn't need to do a lot of city driving this week. And I averaged over 50 miles per gallon. And I'm talking like 85 miles an hour cruising, like nothing slow here. And uh, the Prius just sips fuel. It's been extremely economical, especially as last week I had the Toyota Land Cruiser, which is their big high-riding SUV off-roader, and that got 11 <laughs> miles per gallon. So this is a welcome change to my wallet. <laughs> so back to the drive modes. We have, of course, we're in eco now. Then there's another button next to, next to that, which will turn this from a hybrid vehicle to an electric vehicle or back to hybrid. This is an interesting setting and something a lot of PHEVs don't have. When you select EV, the car actually drives like an EV. So what I mean is when I put my foot down, I'm gonna floor it just once. See, look, floored. It gives a ton of power and the gas engine doesn't kick on. It's almost like a volt. Um, I found this really interesting because uh, Toyota's able to do this. Uh, basically, the, the electric motor portion makes 78 horsepower. The gasoline portion makes 90 something horsepower. And then together, they only make 121, I think is the rated horsepower. So that doesn't seem like much. Uh, and basically, what it means is when you lock it in EV, you're able to use more of that electric portion of acceleration. And it's very sprightly. It honestly chirps the tires when you floor it from a light. And it, it you get the full electric vehicle driving experience. In EV mode, you can put the shifter in B, which I, is braking. I'm not sure what it stands for. But it basically increases regen uh, for closer to one pedal driving. Of course, the regen is still blended on the brake pedal. And it's a very smooth blend, very predictable. Toyota has really got their regen blending absolutely Perfect, I would say. Really nice job. The next button over from that uh, hybrid vehicle or electric vehicle mode is the EV auto mode. And this is an interesting one. When your battery is full, it will prioritize electric driving like we are now. Although it will intelligently kick on the internal combustion engine when needed. For example, wide open throttle where you need that extra you know 30 horsepower or so merging on the highway it'll kick it on and it's really a, uh, a an interesting mode I if I owned one I would actually keep it in EV auto all the time uh, all of these settings the you know EV full locked in mode and the EV auto are only available when there is charge in the high voltage battery and as far as I can tell, and I've looked it up and you know, I went on Prius chat, there's no way to actually charge the high voltage battery 
from the car using the internal combustion engine, you have to plug it in. And I've plugged in this car every night after using it, but I've just been on the highway so much. Um, let's see how many miles I've done in this car. In uh, my time with it, I've done 816.2 miles, and I averaged 47 miles per gallon. Now, the reason the, the MPG is a little low is yesterday we filmed all of the on-track performance stuff and just sucked the fuel down. So that um, is just a byproduct of quick driving. But before we went on track, just normal street driving, where everyone will be driving their Prius Prime, uh, we averaged, uh, again, over 50 miles per gallon <laughs> without even trying. Navigation system is the main weak point to the Prius. It is this uh, tall screen, sort of Tesla Model S X-like, uh, but the usability is awful. It does have CarPlay, which is nice, um, but it doesn't support multi-touch. The nav system's awful. The voice command will not understand anything I say to her, and I, I, it's really abysmal. Honestly, I think... Um, the Prius Prime comes, you know, it comes in three trims, the LE, the XLE, and the Limited. The base trim does not get this big screen, but it still has other safety tech as standard. That's the one I would go for, because I don't see any benefit to this big screen. It looks really cool, it's impressive. Everyone who sat in here is like, whoa, this is cool, and then they start using it. It's like, how does this even work? <laughs> so that is a disappointing aspect of this car. Um, Aside from that though, it, the Prius is just you know your typical great appliance daily driver. Toyota's been doing hybrids for 20 years now, so you know it's gonna be reliable and good and, and will have no problems. And I think that this car feels super well built, extremely strong, very understressed. I, I you know, the, you see these things with two, three, four hundred thousand miles on them all the time, and this car will be no exception to that. It will just run forever. This car is more efficient than a Model 3 when driven in full electric mode. Its MPGE is higher than a Model 3 Standard Plus. That is impressive. We have reached 1% state of charge usable on the battery. We've gone 30.8 miles so far. Got a big whoop. Whoop. Quite comfortable. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we get. Oh, just kicked on 30.9 miles. The little EV mode flashed. The battery went dash dash. And now I can hear the internal combustion engine working. That is six miles more than EPA rated. And I drove completely normally around town. That was a mix of city, a little bit of cruising, not highway, but sort of. Um, you know, surface streets that are a little bit more wide open. Very impressive range, 31 miles, just about 30.9, let's call it 31. That's more than enough range for most people. I mean, I went from one side of our town to the other, to the other, and pretty much back to home now. So that, that was great. What more do you need? I think <laughs> very impressive showing by the Prius in the range test. And that wraps it up for our range test. The Prius blew past the EPA estimate of 25 miles, and now it's on for our closing thoughts and what we learned from our time with the Prius for the last week. After a week with the Prius, I really have to say this is a great option for many people. It's extremely efficient. I mean, the fuel consumption, the electric range is very impressive. The cargo capacity is fine. It is more than what most people would need. I would say if you have dogs though, that higher load floor in the trunk and the lack of rear air vents is definitely a downside. Um, Overall though, it's just a Prius. It's a solid, dependable device to transport you around. It will never fuss at you. It probably will never break. <laughs> and uh, I'm a big fan. I, I would recommend this car to many people. So, good job Toyota. And uh, let's see what the Prius will do at wide open power. <laughs> it's honestly pretty slow. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode of Inside EVs.